great radio stations across the land. iHeartRadio, JoePags.com, Newsmax TV as well. It is the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. And also glad to have Senator Ted Cruz with me. And we're live in studio today with the senator. Normally, Ted, we, we talk over the phone. We talk yep. over, I think we've tried Skype. I don't know if it's worked out, but really a pleasure to sit here across from you and have a conversation today. Well, Thanks. It's, it's great to join you in studio. Great to be in San Antonio today. The biggest thing going on right now is this debate over health care. Yeah. And it's not really a debate over health care. I think people use a misnomer. It's a debate over health insurance. Yeah. Health care in this country, right. we take care of people. We don't have people bleeding out in the street. We sure. don't have people, you know, walking the street, you know, with their hands up saying, I'm sick, nobody will help me. This is about health insurance. Yeah. And if we go back to the time before Obamacare and we talk about what we had in place, mm -hmm. yeah, there were a lot of people who weren't insured. About 30 million Americans. Mm -hmm. The Democrats first lied and said it was 46 mm -hmm. million. They were including illegal aliens. Right. 30 million Americans, and if you break that down, 10 million didn't want it. They were young. They'd rather have a BMW and a nice condo mm -hmm. than go and buy health insurance. About 10 to 15 million could have had it, mm -hmm. didn't fill the paperwork out right, or they didn't know that they can get CHIP mm -hmm. or Medicaid. Right. So let's go back to that day when Obamacare is about to be forced upon mm -hmm. us through fraud. It was a lie. Right. Like your doctor, keep your doctor. Like yep. your plan, keep yep. your plan. Was it necessary to do anything right then? Was anything necessary? Because now we're talking about repealing and replacing. I like the mm -hmm. repeal part. Right. Do we have to replace it? Well, well, look, I, I think we needed health care reform. I, I think at the time of Obamacare, there were a lot of challenges in the system. And, and I think the principles of reform, both then and now, should be expanding competition, enhancing options, and, and empowering you, the consumer and patient, to make your own choices. So, right. for example, things like allowing purchases across state lines. That gives you more options. That no drives down it? prices. It, 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 it really should be. Yeah. Uh, things like portability, that, that, that when you lose your job, you should be able to take your insurance with you uh, so, so that it comes with you. And you think about it, if, if you or I get, get fired tomorrow, you don't lose your car insurance. You don't lose your life insurance, your house right. insurance. No reason on earth you should lose your health insurance. Uh, so there were reforms we should do, all of which should be focused on taking power out of Washington and giving power to you, the consumer. That's what we should have done then, and it's what we should be doing now. You made a promise to repeal and replace when you ran for Senate. You yeah. ran against a, a machine. You ran yeah. against a guy who was the lieutenant governor. Yeah. He had millions and millions of dollars, put 20, 25 million of his own money yeah. Yeah. into the race, and you beat him. You beat him because you got a simple message. We have to get rid of this piece of garbage that is Obamacare. Yeah. We also have to bring jobs back. Mm -hmm. People don't remember. That was a big, big pitch by you. Absolutely. That jobs were necessary, even yeah. in a state, Texas, yeah. where jobs are doing very well and the economy yeah. is doing very well. You beat a guy you weren't supposed to beat. It wasn't dislike Trump beating Hillary. Mm -hmm. But last week or the week, the, week, the week before, when you saw this plan that came through the Senate mm -hmm. that was being pushed by the president, right, right. you were one of the, the initial four who said, no, not yeah. for me, right. because you're extremely conservative and it doesn't do enough. There were some moderates who didn't yeah. like it because yeah. it did too much or something. Right. How, do you, how do you somehow juxtapose mm -hmm. working with moderates right. who don't like it for their reasons and being as conservative as you and Mike mm -hmm. Lee and, mm -hmm. and, and Rain Paul, some mm -hmm. would say, mm -hmm. are? How do you juxtapose that, come up with a plan that's going to work for the majority of Americans. And I really respect the fact that you're sticking to your campaign promise. Mm -hmm. You said you would do this, and that was mm -hmm. one of the first things you said a week and a half ago. Yeah. I said I would do this for yeah. Texas. I can't yeah. not do it. Yeah. Well, look, I, I think we got to get the job done, but we got to do it right. right. That th results matter. It's not just passing a bill whose title is Obamacare repeal. No. We actually got to do something that fixes the problem. And I think it's critical, A, that, that we honor our promise that we've made to the voters for seven years. Republicans have said, if you elect us, we'll, we'll do this. We'll repeal Obamacare. Right. We've got to keep our word. But, but B, and, and, and this is critical, the most important issue is we've got to lower premiums. You know, if you listen to people, I try to spend a lot of time traveling Texas, listening to Texans, listening to the 28 million Texans that right. I represent. The biggest reason people hate Obamacare, they're hurting under Obamacare, is it's made premiums skyrocket. Average families' premiums, they've gone up over $5,000 a year under Obamacare. Remember, Obama promised your premiums would go down $2,500 a right. year. That wasn't true, and instead they've skyrocketed. And, and you'd have to make the argument that he knew it wasn't true, and that Gruber knew it wasn't well, true. Well, and Gruber we said, just had to get this done. said they were counting on, so Jonathan Gruber, the economist who helped design yeah. this for Obama, he said they were counting on, quote, the stupidity of the American people. What an arrogant, condescending, liberal thing to say. Uh, you know... 
to justify Obama and, and the Democrats lying to the American people. Yeah. And we've now seen seven years into Obamacare, we've seen the consequences. The consequences are millions of people have lost their jobs, have been forced into part-time work, have lost their health insurance, have lost their doctors, and their premiums are skyrocketing. You know, Pax, I, I hear every day from Texans who say, I can't afford health insurance anymore. Yeah. I can't afford to provide for my family. We got to fix that. The federal government caused that problem. We got to fix it. And so what I'm urging everyone in the Senate, everyone in the House, what I'm urging the president and the administration to do is let's lower premiums. Let's have more competition, more choices, more option, more freedom so that premiums go down and more people can afford to buy health insurance. For many years, the, the House of Representatives and it's Senator Ted Cruz, we really appreciate you taking the time. Um, the House of Representatives passed many, many bills to repeal. Yeah. Many, many times. Yeah. I, yep. Three dozen or yep. more. Yeah. And... The last one, uh, now, first of all, when it got to the Senate, did you vote for these bills? Uh, absolutely. Why can't we just use one of them? Why are we doing something new? Why are we trying to remake, you know, the, the, the wheel? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, back in January, uh, Mike Lee and I both argued, let's take up and, and vote on the repeal bill that in 2015, virtually every single Republican in Congress already voted for. Mike and I both said, we'll vote for it again. Let's go. And and unfortunately, the the... Leadership and the administration rejected that plan. They said, no, we don't want to do that. We're not going to. There were a number of, of, of Republicans who said, well, gosh, we were willing to vote for that when Obama was going to veto it, but we're not right. willing to vote for it when Trump would actually sign it. Um, listen, I think that's, that's unfortunate. It, it's why people get frustrated with politicians, because they're not willing to follow through on what they say. So where we are now, we've got a bill that's made it through the House. We're mm -hmm. in the Senate. Getting it through the Senate's not going to be easy. We've got a really narrow majority, 52 Republicans. And I can argue it's really 50-50 if you, if you count Murkowski and Collins. And every Democrat has said they're completely unwilling to work with us on anything productive on health care. So we start out with 48 hard no's. Right. That means we need 50 out of 52 Republicans. If we lose three R's, we're done. So what I've been trying to do for the last six months is trying to bring Republicans together in the conference and unify us. Bring together conservatives, bring together moderates, bring together leadership, bring together the president and the administration. And the key to doing that, I think, is focusing on premiums and lowering premiums. Why? Because if a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, premiums go down 10, 20, 30 percent, yeah. that's a win-win for everyone. That's right. a win for conservatives, it's a win for moderates, it's a win for the people who elected us. And if you focus on results, uh, you, you know, it was interesting, you, you, you talked a minute ago about how, you know, you said, Ted, you know, you're, you're very conservative. You know, Reagan never beat his chest and said, I'm right. so scary conservative. I, look, I think I believe in common sense principles. I believe in freedom. I believe in choice. Right. I believe in free enterprise. Those are basic common sense, especially in Texas. Right. The overwhelming majority of Texans believe in freedom and individual choice and, and, and free enterprise works. It's uh, Senator Ted Cruz. You know, Ted, I think you and I agree that we want to take care of people who go and fight for our country. Yes. When it comes to health care for veterans, yeah. and the VA system sucks. Yeah. It's horrible. People died mm -hmm. when paperwork was being fudged in Phoenix yeah. alone. Yeah. Dozens of people died because they were, there were lies being written down about them having appointments that they right, never had. Right. They were being put off for months and months, and were dying in the meantime. Why can't we get to a system, and I know that we're getting close, mm -hmm. but why can't we get to a system where somebody who signs on the dotted line and says, I will die mm -hmm. for the Constitution, mm -hmm. I will die for the people of the, mm -hmm. and for the value system of this country. Right. Why can't we get to the point to where that person has a card mm -hmm. and can go to their favorite doctor, yep. their local yep. doctor, yep. not some facility somewhere far away, and let them use it? Yeah. Why is that so hard? Uh, you are preaching to the choir, and and I think that's the direction reform needs to go. Yeah. You, you know, this week I'm I'm doing veterans town halls all, all across the state of Texas. Did one last night in in Dallas. We've got them coming up in 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 Austin and Houston, yeah. and and j just meeting with veterans, answering their questions. And a lot of the questions are concerning the VA and how do you improve it. And and you look at the scandal of the last few years, where where. VA facilities were keeping fake and bogus books. They were lying and wrongfully denying veterans care that they needed, sometimes life-saving care right. and in, in jeopardizing their lives. It was shameful. It was a disgrace. How do we fix it? There are two things we need to do to fix it. Number one, we need accountability, and that's something I've been helping lead the fight in the Senate for, is more accountability, the ability to take, if a VA employee has lied, has broken the criminal law, they ought to be prosecuted. Right. 
And if they've wrongfully denied veterans care that they've earned and they deserve, they should be terminated. Yeah, but so many of those people still work at the VA. Uh, it's it's Clean right house. now. It is a massive bureaucracy. The VA is larger than the U.S. Navy. Wow. It's a huge government bureaucracy. And, and we have passed some legislation to enhance accountability. We need more. But then the second, the, the second reform is exactly where you started, yeah. which is choice. I think every veteran ought to have the right to choose his or her doctor. So if you want to go to the VA, that's your right. You've earned it. You've bled for it. You can go to, go to the VA doctors that, that, that you know and you've relied on. But if you want to go to the doctor down the street, the local cardiologist, you ought to be able to go and do that as well. You ought to be able to have choice. And, you know, it's the same principle we we're talking about with Obamacare. Right. How do you improve the VA? You, you give veterans choice. And that leads to better outcomes. How do you improve Obamacare? How do you improve health insurance in the non-veteran context? You give consumers choice. You know, I'm reminded of a, a, a great story. My, my favorite former senator from Texas, Phil Graham. Uh -huh. uh, years ago, he was, at, he was at a Senate hearing. And, and, and he made just, just an off-the-cuff comment. He said, well, you know, I love my, my kids more than anybody else. And there was this witness testifying who was a liberal, this, this very earnest liberal who leans forward and says, well, well with all respect, Senator, that's not true. I, I love your kids. I care about your kids every bit as much as you do. And Phil leaned forward with a twinkle in his eye. He said, really? What are their names? <laughs> I'm guessing they didn't know the names. It's Senator <laughs> Ted Cruz from the great state of Texas. Before I let you go, I, I've got to talk a little bit about what we talked about downstairs. Yeah. And social media is all the rage these yeah. days. Who knew it would become yeah. what it's become? Yeah. You have no problem jumping yeah. into the fray. Yeah. In fact, some you, your tweets are some of the yeah. smartest, most sarcastic, funniest tweets I've seen. Um, recently, Alyssa Milano, who we should all listen to, she was on Who's the Boss. <laughs> she, she tweeted out something about this John Ossoff guy who was a, yeah. a laughing stock in, in Georgia 06. <laughs> she, she tweeted something about how horrible it was and a group hug because he yeah. lost. And you jumped in and said, I like hugs, something like that. <laughs> and then she went at you about, you should pay attention to your constituency, and you should this, and you yeah. should that. How engaged are you in social media? How important is it for you to get your message out that way? And when did you make the decision that, I don't really care if it hurts me politically, I'm going to go after these idiots when, when they say something stupid? Oh, look, social media, it's a wonderful tool. And, it, and it's a great tool to connect with the people and, and go around the media gatekeepers. You know, the mainstream media has a partisan political agenda. Right. Social media lets you cut them out, go straight to, straight to the, the people. And, you know, you know, the Hollywood left. Listen, Alyssa Milano, she was awesome in Who's the Boss. I grew up <laughs> watching it. Um, it was a lot, lot of fun. Uh, but, you know, a lot of Hollywood liberals, they, they live in a cocoon where, you know, you and I were laughing about the videos that they put out in the general election. Where right, they, and you said something that I, I thought was brilliant. <laughs> Well, you know, they're run them more. <laughs> yeah, run, I would have paid to run them because they're standing there so arrogant and condescending right. and treating the American people like we're idiots. Right. And they somehow think that works. You, you know, I've got, uh, you, you, you know, I always know something's going right when, when, when Hollywood lefties are coming out slamming me. You know, Rosie O'Donnell came out attacking me and, and, and trying to contribute to my Democrat opponent. Right. And, and we promptly said fantastic and tweeted it out. <laughs> Rosie's coming after us. I, I'll tell you, Pags, the day... Hollywood liberals are praising me, or God forbid, the day the New York Times comes out and agrees with anything I'm doing, yeah. that's the day to hang it up and, 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 and call it quits right then. But, but I'll tell you, I, I'm not holding my breath for that to happen anytime soon. Ted, I really appreciate you coming by. I know that you're traveling the state, uh, and the fact that you made some time for us, thank you so much. I really do appreciate uh, what you do for Texas. And, and again, for those in the national audience who haven't you know, heard me talk, well, they didn't hear me talk to you in 2012 and, and earlier, um, they have to realize that I'm being as completely straight and honest as I can be when I say you made promises, you stuck to the promises, and I know that it's not easy to do yeah. in Washington, D.C., so I really appreciate you coming by. Well, Joe, thank you. Thank you so much for, for just standing up and defending freedom. It, it, it matters. It matters. The American people are engaged, and, and, and we've got an opportunity right now in Washington. It's an historic opportunity. We can't blow it. And, and the simplest message that I think our elected officials need to hear in Washington is let's do what we promised. Every member of the House, every member of the Senate, the President, the administration, let's just do in July, 
of 2017, the same things we promised in September, October, November. Let's repeal Obamacare. Let's do tax reform and reg reform. Let's bring back jobs. Let's raise wages. Let's defend the Constitution and Bill of Rights. If we deliver on those promises, this is an historic opportunity. And, and, and let me also say to all your listeners, I want to encourage you to come to our website, yeah. tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org, tedcruz.org. And thank you and God bless you. All right, Ted, thank you so much. All right, there you go. Your thoughts on the conversation with Senator Ted Cruz, 1-800-383-9624, JoePags.com for social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and email. Uh, we'll be back right after this on The Joe Pags Show. Stay right here.